location information. Uh, again, the location is tied to a separate database of your locations. Uh, you can put in general information. You can put in special information on the web. Uh, put in notes about the location. Uh, the second page of this has a spot for additional information, um, which I'm going to actually get you to. And there's a benefit, Ace we're headquarters. So if I view the location, go to additional info. If you put in the address, city, state, and zip, uh, what you can do is actually get from Cheryl, get from our web people, a, a link that will allow you to uh, put this location on Google Maps from your Ace web. So your ACE web can actually pull up Google Maps, show the students the location of this particular class. Uh, the other thing about putting in the location, city, state, and zip is that that gives you, especially if you run classes at multiple locations, geographic locations, you can do statistical analysis based on the city, the state, even the zip code uh, to be able to do some analysis of your performance of classes. Okay, let's get back to where we were. All right, the location view, um, and again, um, all right, let's move on. I'm getting, okay, quick reports. Hopefully everybody who uses a course in Manager knows and loves quick reports, um, basically allowing you to run a battery of reports right from the course screen. And again, if you have the email module, then you are able to do email to class, quick list. One of the things that is new, it's been around, I should say, last several months, but a check special needs, and I don't know that I have in my demo one, but the idea is that if you have a student who might have marked that they have a special need, from the course quick reports, you can click special needs, and it'll bring up the student name, and it'll tell you whatever was put in the special needs. There's a top dog, which is just something in the routine. But it allows you to get a quick view <clears throat> of uh, a student's special needs status. <clears throat> Additional information, UDS. This is the second screen. Uh, a lot of different options in here kind of for special use purposes. Uh, alternate course code allows you to reference an alternate ID. Uh, actually, one of the things that can also be used for, and this is on the books for this coming year, is cross-linking your student manager courses, your courses in Aceware, to perhaps a campus database. I know in Montana, uh, in uh, Virginia, we've got a couple of those cases where we're trying to uh, integrate with PeopleSoft and, and Banner, uh, and that's a way for you to be able to tie the Banner ID of the class to the class in Aceware. Uh, registration times. Again, if you've got a certain registration time, probably mainly for workshop or conferences, you can put that in, reference that in your material. Email attachments. If you are sending out attachments with email receipts, you can do that. People to notify who have a, people who, notif who want to be notified whenever a registration comes in. So if you've got an anal instructor or an anal coordinator, not that anybody does, or you are one of those, you can add your email to the BCC line and you'll automatically get a carbon copy blind of any registration in that class. All right, sponsoring firm, again, mainly for contract programs. You can actually link that to the firm's table. And then finally, membership requisites is where you can specify that you have to be a member to take the class. And this is of particular relevance for OSHER lifelong learning uh, folks, because typically OSHER classes are limited to members. In other words, you can't even get it. It's not like a discount. You cannot register for the class unless you are a member of the OSHER group. <clears throat> The next area underneath here, user-defined fields. Again, um, user, you can modify these, um, use these for your own purposes. Um, and again, as you recall, there are user-defined fields on the name, the course, register, and uh, 
well, actually firm and instructor. So multiple user defined fields. General notes about UDS. Turning them on and off are user specific. So every user, and I'm going to reiterate this because this is something that uh, people tend to struggle with sometimes. I'm going to edit my preferences. So this takes us to the preferences screen. The idea that turning fields on and off, I have the rights to edit my own criteria. So if I wanted to say my, my classes, none of my classes, I'm worried about hours or credit hours, like Carnegie College credit. So I can turn that off, and that field will be disabled on my screen. Anything in black is tied to the individual user, Chuck Havlicek or Lori Thompson or Joe Bo. Uh, blue items, and this is in the next part of it, is that they are global. So in other words, that's system level. And you have to be an administrator to change those. And again, everybody has to play by the same labels for or the same behavior or the blue items. Uh, data validation for character and number user defined fields. There are some special mechanisms that you can use to validate data in uh, user defined fields. We'll cover that in the codes webinar. And again, on the main course screen, you can display the contents of a course user defined field or any other element on the course uh, from the main screen. And I'm actually going to get to that because that's kind of a cool element. Um, course UDFs. Now, I'm going to bring up a class using the F2 key, which I wanted to make sure we're going to cover later. But I wanted to bring up a class. So we're going to look at ACEWORK Conference. And we're going to look at, OK, Lori, I was at, where are we at? I'm, I'm losing my losing my thought here. Oh, UDF, course UDFs. OK, whew, thanks. I, I had uh, off the game there. This area between the enrolled and the button that's workshops or package is where you can actually display a user-defined view of some information that's somewhere related to this class. So from this particular window, you could reference something in the user-defined area. You can reference a registration fee. Uh, you could reference some other information that relates to this class. Well, how do, you, how do you do that? By going into the course UDF edit, there is the user display down here, trim fees. This allows you to define, and you're, you may need your, uh, your text help to kind of decide how you want that formatted. But this basically gives you the ability to custom define that kind of a view inside uh, the contents of your sub-tabs in the course. Lori, anything vestigial from the previous screen? So far, so good? So far, so good. Nothing for now. All right, main fees, fees. Lots of flexibility on fees. And, and again, we're not giving this as much detail as we probably need. Um, I, I'll wrench in again. There is good uh, review of this in the help guide. Main fees. You can have as many main fees as you want. Every fee must have a different, uh, each, you have to have different descriptions for different fees. Uh, you can hide them from the web. You can have an expiration date for, for that. They can be member only fees. But a student only gets to pick one. Optional additional fees. You can have an unlimited number of other fees. And an individual can do some, none, all. And in the fee category, you've got the options, again, show on the web or not, member only fees, automagic expiration of early bird, mandatory optional fees, discount fees. Again, the online help guide gives you a pretty thorough review of that. So